Hi, welcome to The Pound. My name is JC Wilkinson. This is This Side of the Fence. It's a show that I put together here. Um, today, I have a special guest, Mr. Scott Van Tieflin. We have him sitting in his, his little chair there and with his guitar, and he's going to actually jam out and play a couple of songs for us. Um, the first song he's going to do is called Bart's Road. So, take it away. All right, this is Scott Van Tieflin. This is J.C. Wilkinson here at This Side of the Fence. And we are at The Pound, and uh, that particular song, I believe, came off Scott's CD, um, North, which was released, I believe, in 2004. And um, your sound is a really cool sound. Cool. It's it's um, (laughs) Because there's there's the old country, you know, you're wailing and... Johnny and you know George, um, which is like the heart of of country music anyway. Mm-hmm. And then there's the new sound where you got Garth and you know everybody running that way. But you're kind of somewhere in the middle, but sort of off in your own lane. Oh yeah, yeah, which yeah. Is, which is really cool. So tell me, <laughs> tell me a bit about your music and um, uh, like when did you start? Did you teach yourself? 
Actually, I am a, a lifelong musician. I started like before I could even talk, I'm sure. Um, okay. uh, according to my parents, anyway. <laughs> okay. um, he, uh, I always had a natural ability of, of picking up tunes, like a uh, really natural ability just to, just to pick stuff up, right? right. Um, I've been a singer for as, as long as I can remember. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, I, I was trained in... Of uh, you know piano and I took actually trumpet in high school. Yeah, yeah. Um, Same so here. So I actually I did um, a lot of conservatory exams. Okay. So there was a bit of classical training involved in there. Good, good. Um, where I started writing music was um, actually I'm going to date myself here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I started writing in high school in the mid '80s. Okay. And of course now that particular uh, era of music was dominated by, you know, extra effects and yeah, synth pop yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So the stuff that I was writing at the time was synth pop. Okay. But, um, you know, I had friends at the time and their parents kept telling me, that you should try country. And it's like, oh, heck no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> country. Country's not cool, man. <laughs> yeah. um, and then <laughs> it was about uh, the mid 90s uh, when country made a real huge insurgence in Thunder Bay. Yeah. And uh, I just kind of got on the bandwagon, and the rest is history. Oh, really? Yeah. Good, good. Um, now, this particular CD, North, which released in 2004, it's got uh, 12 tracks on it. Now, there's a song here, Without Your Love. Mm -hmm. Now, your bio says that this went to number 20 in Europe. Something like that. Yeah. I think it peaked at number 18 or something yeah. like that in southern Span southern Europe, I believe, in Spain. Okay. Uh, it was released on a compilation that my producer had done. Right. And, um, uh, yeah, I was surprised. He emailed me this 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 uh, this chart from uh, from Europe, and I'm going, cool, it's number 18. So it peaked at number – it actually entered the chart at number 18, yeah. peaked at number 18, and left the next week. Okay. So, yeah, no, it was only in the chart for a week, and it was at number 18. So. Yeah, but that's just still a pretty solid accolade to have for any kind of, uh, for any type of your music, eh? Mm -hmm. um, so you got some training in, and then, uh, I mean, I, I can totally relate to the whole country thing. Um, now, when you write, do you write a genre, or you just write what you write, and then it usually just comes out country? I write what I write, and for some reason or other, it always seems to come out country. I mean, even back when I was writing in the 80s, it always came out country, and I didn't want to admit it. So Okay, okay. So you were in denial for a few years until the, until the 90s hit, and then Pretty much, country yeah. became... Okay, yeah. no, no, I can relate to that, too. So <laughs> it's like, you should sing country. It's like, uh, why? <laughs> no, because this country's really cool. Not yet. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right on. Um, now... With, like, I met you, I believe, it was roughly about six months ago. About that, yep. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I went to your studio, and I looked around, and there was the big board, drums, guitars, all kinds of instruments. And I'm thinking, okay, you don't have a whole lot of space to have a whole bunch of people come in here and actually play all this stuff. So who plays all this stuff? And you just smiled, and you said, I do. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. And I was like, yeah. okay. Except for the drums. That's the drums? Uh, okay. Yeah. No, the drums are my son's. Okay. Yeah. Now, that particular setup is uh, for your doghouse studio, your doghouse sound studio. Right. Okay. Um, now, what's going on in there? Do you do like local people or just whoever, or you plus your own stuff? Or? I, it was built mainly for my own personal use. Okay. And uh, it just kind of blossomed from there. Um, I started recording a local acts, mm -hmm. and uh, I've had the. the uh, uh, the, the grace to record some really great people really? and uh you know whether though they've actually done anything with it or not is another story but uh <laughs> i hope they do uh, yeah. i mean the stuff that we recorded was really good okay cool now doghouse studio or doghouse sound um yeah i totally got to my question here doghouse <laughs> sound you have been doing different projects um in the area mm -hmm. and um we're actually contemplating on coming to visit you as soon as I can get some things organized oh, yeah, cool. uh, for, for, for myself, actually, because um, I am in the works of, of doing my CD. But this show isn't about me. We'll, we'll talk about that another time. Um, Sounds like a plan. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> now, uh, it's actually really cool that you actually have a studio in town. Now, you've been doing this for a long time, though. Mm-hmm. This, yeah, because when I first talked to you, it was like you, you started talking 80 something, and I was like, I did, yeah. Uh, you've been doing and it what? Was, yeah, I actually I started recording um, using cassettes. 
Okay. Uh, little plastic things with the magnetic tape that runs through them for yes. the, uh, younger people that don't know what they I, are. I, I remember those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so what we used to do back in the day, uh, before we had the advent of modern technology that was affordable to us, right. we would take two cassette players and you'd record one track and then you'd bounce it onto another cassette right. and record something along with it. Right. So it's basically bouncing and multi-tracking. Now, the only drawback with that is, is that every time you record onto a cassette, you lose quality. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, everything kind of sounded really hissy and tinny, <laughs> and it sounded like, yeah. So the more tracks you make, the worse your sound does. Yeah. So, yeah, mm-hmm. that started about the same time I actually started writing. So, and it was, once again, it was a means of recording what I was writing, and it kind of grew from there. So I moved up, and my parents bought me uh, actually a Fostex four-track cassette player okay. i still have that in the studio it's it's, it's under glass in a little so, corner yeah, yeah. yeah okay you part of the museum yeah okay cool um now uh would you think about like handling some bigger bigger acts or bigger people um or just being a sound tech to to help people record i mean if there was a bigger studio i mean we have uh I think it was dining room studios or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I think one of the things that the area doesn't have so much of is is, is quality sound techs mm-hmm. and, and sound engineers who actually know what they're doing and can actually help produce stuff. Cause, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I, I'm always open to, to producing people. Yeah. Um, if it's somebody else's studio, you know, like I mean, I wouldn't feel comfortable, you know, going and playing with their gear. Yeah. But. Um, you know, I can definitely say, you know what, that doesn't quite sound right. Can you tweak this? Can you tweak that? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. more of a producer's role. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, you, for composition, I mean, uh, for me, I'm, I'm a, a lyrics, I mean, I'm, I'm a writer at heart. I was a writer before I even started singing. Mm-hmm. Um, so the writing part of it, I, I don't really struggle with. Um, guitar, I taught myself how to play guitar and I sing. Mm-hmm. Now, beyond that, it's it's Greek or Japanese or whatever you want to call it because I have the sound in my head, but to be able to pull the drum track out or be able to pull the bass line or even throw the lead in there or, or yeah. keyboard or whatever, it's like I can tell you what I'm hearing, but to actually do it yourself. But you, you can sit down and go, hmm, no, it needs this, it needs that, it needs this, it needs that. I mean, like, where does something like that come from? Um, well, I'm going to be the first to admit that uh, I hear things. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Whether that sounds like a yeah, bad this thing. This isn't or, a clinical it's, thing. It's, it, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I don't hear things. voices. I hear music. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hearing things as a musician is actually fine. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah, encouraged. Like, you know, I'll be listening to something and then I'll go, oh, geez, you know what would sound really good in this would be would be like this. Like, I mean, this, um, yeah. um, this one track that we did, I was like, oh, this would sound so good with uh, like a like a multi-track, really crunchy guitar yeah. rhythm type of thing, right? And yeah. this is like, oh, yeah, no, I, I can lay that down. Give me five minutes, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, that, that particular skill I think is actually really cool, and, and you have my, my utmost respect for that because be able to just sit there listen to something and go, okay, this is what it needs, and then be able to produce it because mm-hmm. I can tell you what it needs, but <laughs> I can go, okay, I don't know how to make that sound, but I can actually tell you what I need, what I think it needs anyway. Yeah. Um, we're going to get you to run through another song. Now, this particular song is called Home is Where the Heart Is, mm-hmm. and this is off your new project. Correct. So this, uh, this project is uh, very long in the making. Yes, <laughs> yes. You see, um, shortly after North was released, I put together the band locally to, right. to help me back it. Right. And we started recording it in my studio that I had out in the country. Okay. That's actually where the name of the, the studio came from. Was I had this other building, and okay. in my family called it the Doghouse. Okay. So, yeah. Ah, so, okay. Yeah. So now you know where Dog Coast sound came from. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, and I was recording in 16-bit. So we had started recording it, and then I had done a major gear upgrade, and I was started recording 24-bit, and we started li- listening back, and the sonic quality was like night and day. Okay. So it's like, okay, well, we can't do this. It's just going to sound like terrible, right? Yeah. So we scrapped it and started again from scratch. Started again, yeah. Right. So uh, at that point in time, we were trying to get across the – what we wanted to record was what we could produce produce live okay. so with the members that we had in the band at the time we wanted to be able to you know this is which is this is the album right you know, this right. is what it sounds like right. okay um so yeah we had done that and then we got a change in the lineup in the band and the, the arrangements kind of morphed okay. so this, this is what happens over time is when yeah. you start playing stuff you know stuff changes like yeah. i mean some of the tracks off north the way it's recorded on north we don't play them like that anymore <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so yeah yeah so it was like, uh, yeah. yeah so yeah we we scrapped those ones and we started again so now we're on the, the third iteration Okay. Um, and on the third iteration, we were about, I don't know, around 75% complete on the album. Okay. 
and uh, we I moved actually we moved okay. in from the country and I bought this place in the city okay and uh, I had to pack up the studio and put it in storage okay. and I had everything backed up on an external hard drive and you can see where this is going yeah <laughs> so after four months of you know rebuilding the studio in town uh, I got everything hooked back up and went and plugged the hard drive and it went <laughs> And it cost me, yeah, oh, eighty dollars. Later, I got okay. a whole bunch of drum tracks of just you know <laughs> snare hits yep. and you know multiple vocal tracks and yeah. yeah. So that was the fourth iteration. Now that I'm on, and seven years later. Okay, so you just got a brief glimpse of the overnight success. Just, mm. so, just so you got some idea <laughs> of what happens before people actually get there, and you go, "Hey, that sounded awesome. I know who you are." Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a short break, and we're going to get uh, Scott to sit up there, and he's going to play Home is Where the Heart Is. Oh. 
Right on. That was Home is Where the Heart Is. It's Mr. Scott Van Tieflin. I am J.C. Wilkinson. You are listening to This Side of the Fence at the Pound. Um, well, I just like your music. I mean, I just from the first time I heard you sing, the first time I heard you play, I was like, wow, that is like so cool. You know, and I was thinking... You listen to the radio, and there's a particular sound that's happening, especially mm-hmm. now, right? And then I listen to other artists like like um, Scott Skirving, and there's a few other people in town that, that that do country, right? But your sound is like you said, is like you're on you're in your own little avenue. It's like nobody sounds like you, and you don't sound like anybody. And when I hear you sing, I know that's you. That's cool. And that's that. Yeah, that's actually yeah. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. It's um, and it's something that. Uh, I think it's really important for for artists, anyways. I mean, to establish your own sound. It, yeah, without actually seeing a person to be able to tell who they are just by what they sound like. Yeah, it, that's huge. Yeah, 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 that's cool. Well, I can tell you from my perspective, <laughs> you've yeah. achieved that, Thank and it's much. actually it's a really cool it's a really cool solid sound. Now, I'm just curious. Um, now, you said you've been singing like your whole life. And you took mm. some musical background training, right? Um, have you taken any voice training? No. Nope. No. Okay. So this is all naturally developed over time. You just found your sound and, and yep. just, okay. Because I actually teach voice and I've had vocal training. Right. So I'm listening to you and I'm thinking it's like, okay, breathing's fine. Pitch is fine. Tone's good. It's like phrasing's real. Well, like you, you enunciate your words. Um, and with guitar, you, you pretty much taught yourself? Yeah. I'm self-taught on guitar. Okay. Yeah. Now I don't proclaim to be the best guitar player in the world, by the way. <laughs> Well, hey, you know, Richie Zambora <laughs> and Jimmy Page, except everybody else. But uh, I know, I know, I know. And, oh, and yeah. that's okay. Those people are supposed to be there. Yeah. That's that's what inspired us when we were kids. Exactly. Um, now, would you ever think of, and just I'm, I'm throwing this way out of left field. Right. Um, thinking about coaching, teaching, mentoring youth or developing artists just to help them develop their own sound. Yeah, I, th- I think I could probably do that. Yeah, because yeah. re- the reason I'm asking is because I mean that's one of the things that I do sort of on the side when I'm not doing this show and not right. doing my own music yeah. is I work with youth. Because right. one of one of the the concepts that I came up with, especially when I came up here from Toronto, right. and there's so many talented people, it's like why let these kids wait until they're 18, 19, and hit the bar scene before they actually know what they're doing? I right. Mean, I get them get them the foundation now because they're already interested, they're already playing, they're already singing, mm-hmm. and um, um, and this. My little recruitment message for you too. <laughs> um, gotcha. I'm starting to look for some of the the artists in town who who are solid and have a, a good understanding of what they're doing and they're easy to get along with and easy to talk to. And um, I'm gonna gonna put some couple of programs together. But anyway, that's for another show. So <laughs> we'll get back to you. Uh, Let's see, we got we got about three shows lined up. Yeah, right? pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Which is okay because definitely I definitely want you to have you back. This is actually the first time that you've been here on this particular show, and it's yeah. it's an honor to have you. I'm really happy that you actually made it because you do have a busy schedule now. When we were talking earlier, you were talking about like mechanical engineering. That's right. Okay. So, yeah, I'm, so actually, <laughs> I'm actually a Confederation College alumni. Okay. Yeah, I graduated from the mechanical engineering technician program here uh, in the early 90s. And uh, I've been working in uh, engineering consulting and manufacturing for 20 years or something like that. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, so yeah, my latest venture was in International Falls, so... Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I specialize in, in heavy uh, heavy industrial piping and hotter and the higher pressure the happier i am okay there you go okay so he's a musician he's a singer songwriter he's a sound tech and he's a mechanical engineer well you know what we got a bit of time left so i'm going to get you to jump up and do one more song for us sure um we are going to do i believe fortune to make fame mm-hmm. and this is off the new project too it is so it's we're not going to a little bit of a twist on words this one it, Okay, yeah. so if we got enough time, I'm going to get you to play it first. And if we got enough time, we'll chat a bit about the song. Sure. So I'll get you to run up there, and uh, you can get yourself set up. And I will. Uh, are, you, are we going to take a short break? Actually, you know what? No, we're just going to have you run up there. I'm just going <laughs> to keep. Okay. T- I'm just going to keep talking. I like to hear the sound of my own voice. I guess it's a personal thing. Um, but yeah, this is this particular show is about giving artists in Northwestern Ontario a chance to showcase their music and, um, you know, help the people in the region see who's out there and, and what they're doing and what's going on. So, uh, uh, like I said, today um, we have a wonderful guest, uh, Mr. Scott Van Tieflin, and uh, he's a very talented artist and guitarist and singer-songwriter, and he is going to perform Fortune to Make Fame. 
I didn't write it, but it, here it is. All right, that was Scott Van Tiefel and Fortune to Make Fame. My name is J.C. Wilkinson. You were listening to This Side of the Fence here at The Pound. We're going to get Scott to come back and have a seat, and we're going to chat for a couple more minutes, and then we're going to wrap up this episode. I'm thinking in the back of my head, I need to have this guy come back because like half an hour is just far too short (laughs) for doing what we were doing. Like I'm having too much fun here. This is great. Yeah, so, uh, well, once again, thank you for coming. Um... Now, just briefly, you told me about this gig that you did the other night. I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So who was in town? We opened for a a very large name and a very, very large man. We opened for Trace Adkins at the Community Auditorium. Okay, there you go. That was was pretty phenomenal. Okay. The guy's huge. (laughs) I know, he's he's a big man. He's, what, 6'6", I guess? Yeah. Wow. Um, and he's a big country boy. He is. He's not yeah. just tall. He's he's actually a big a big <laughs> man. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, before we wrap the show, there's just one little story that I needed to share because um, I, I read this on your bio. Sure. And uh, this whole George Canyon thing, <laughs> you, you got to tell me about about about. Sharing the stage with George Canyon. Okay, so I got the opportunity to open up solo for for George Canyon at the Odd, and uh, it was it was a great show. I mean, we I had a lot of fun, okay. and then uh, and I got a chance to sit and chat with George. He's a very very nice man, down to earth. 
you know, very personable. And uh, I was just sitting in the back of the audi- audience, you know, just kind of snuck in the back. And yeah. I was watching his show. And he calls me back up on stage. He says, hey, has Scott leave yet? And it's like, uh, they were trying to find me. He went in the green room and everything. Okay. He was trying to find me. So finally, I just kind of made my way down to the front of the audience, down to the front and went in on the, off the, uh, the stage, the stage wing off the, off the yeah. side. And he brought me up on stage. And, uh, yeah, he's, everybody gave me a big round of applause, of course, you know, because yeah. it was cool. It was really cool. Yeah. Um, but he said, you know, I'm going to get you to do a song with me. Well, he wanted me to do uh, A Good Hard Woman okay. by w- Waylon Jennings, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I know the song, but I don't know it well enough to pull off all the lyrics. I mean, it's just, that's one of my faux pas. Is yeah, yeah. I've got this mental block, right? And it's like, yeah. uh, uh, what was that word? Oh, no. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, well, I, I graciously bowed out and I says, George, I'm, I'm sorry. I really don't know that song. I'm, I'm a child of the 80s, man. <laughs> so he's, he's going through a couple other songs and he's going, yeah, no, sorry. don't know that one. He's, how about this one? No, 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 I'm not going to do that one. Um, so then he started playing. He did the, um, the intro, uh, George Michael, Faith. Yep, yep. So it's going to chink, chink, yep. chink, chink, chink. Well, he started doing that riff, and I started, well, I guess it would be nice. And he stopped dead and looked over at me like this. No, we're not going to do that one. <laughs> <laughs> and the audience was going. And then he started playing the opening sequence for La Bamba. Yeah. So I said, okay, well, I know this one. So, ba la ba la ba la ba <laughs> The whole band kicked in, and it was great. We rocked the audience. Very done. Very done. Okay, um, that's about our time for this show. Uh, thank you, Scott, uh, Mr. Scott Van Tiefen, for coming and uh, for playing a few songs for us and sharing your music with the audience. My pleasure. It's awesome. Actually, uh, a great honor for, for having you here. And um, I believe if you want to listen to Scotty's music, it's at uh, ReverbNation.com mm-hmm. slash Scott Van Tiefen. We'll get, uh, we'll get the crew here to... to Posted up there so that you even can if you spell my name wrong, it still comes up. It says, "Did you mean?" Yeah, there you go. Okay, <laughs> even better. And also, we got Scott Grace's with the, um, his CD North, and it's going to be on the rotation for the college here at the Pound. Um, so, my name is JC Wilkinson. You are listening to this side of the fence, and uh, we are going to wrap this show up. And thanks for listening. <laughs> Light on.